Welcome to Unit 1, Lesson 13. This is Part 1 of the video. And for today's lesson, we are going to start to do systems of linear and quadratic equations. And we're going to also briefly touch on quadratic inequalities toward the end, if there's time. If not, there will be a Part 2. So, let's get started. Let's just jump right in. Okay? Um, example 1. Solve the following system by graphing. Oh, these are so much nicer when we get to do this by graphing. Um, I am going to start by graphing this line in green because graphing lines are always the easiest thing to do. Okay? I know that the 1 represents my y-intercept, so I'm going to put a big dot where y is 1. And I know my slope is 2, so I go up 2 over 1. Up 2 over 1, up 2, over 1. And I'm going to continue that same pattern down to the left. Okay, down to left 1. Okay, I'm going in the opposite direction, so I go in the opposite. Right here. And I just draw a line right through these. Put arrowheads because it goes forever, and because I'm in this habit, I will label this. Y equals 2X plus 1. If you do not have two different colored pens or pencils, I would label yours as well. You should get in that habit. It's a good habit to be in. Now, this second one in blue, they want us to solve this system graphically. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to my calculator, and I'm going to put this equation into Y1, and I'm going to look at my table so that I get a table of points. All right? So I'm going to move this thing over, turn this bad boy on. Go to y equals, and I'm going to put x squared, okay, minus 2x plus 1. That looks the same. So I'm going to look at my table, and I am going to bring this part right here. Now, these are a table of points. So... I have, and I'm going to go top down, negative 2, 9. So I go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Wow, 9 would be right here. That's negative 2, 9. Then I'm going to go to negative 1, 4. Right here. Then I'm going to go to 0, 1. Eureka, we have one of the lines. Perfect. One of the uh, matching coordinates, I should say. Now I have 1, 0. And then everything else, we have 2, 1. I'm starting to see a reflection here. So 3, 4, and 4, 9. It looks like we have our second point of intersection. So if I draw this parabola, you know, it curves. There you go. And my two coordinates where they intersect, those are the solutions. Okay, that's at 0 on the x, 1 on the y. And right here, which happens to be 4 on the x, 9 on the y. Now, that was done by graphing, and they gave us the grid to graph this. All right? But you know we can do this in the calculator and have our calculator give us the answers. So right now, we currently have my parabola in y1. I'm going to move to y2, and I'm going to put the equation of my line, 2x plus 1. And if I graph both of those, uh, there's a parabola, mm, there's the line. Okay? Well, it looks like, I mean, I can kind of see where they intersect, um, kind of up here. Right? But I want to see a little bit higher, just so that's a little bit more clear to me. So if I go to my window, and you don't have to do this, I'm just finicky. And I'm going to make my y go up to 15. I want to see if I can see that intersection a little bit better. There you go. Crosses once, crosses twice. There you go. See, to me, that's a lot more clear. You didn't have to do that, but, but I just like to have things nice. So how can I find out the points of intersection? I can go to my table, and wherever my y values are the same, okay, I'm going to bring this right here because I'm going to draw on this. Wherever my y values are, would be the same, that would be my answer. I'm trying to figure out where I can put this and not cover things, but hey, sometimes you win, sometimes you lose, right? 
So where are my y values the same? Well, they're here the same one, so when x is zero, y is one. Where else? They're the same here at nine, so when x is four, y is nine. That is definitely one way we can do this, and I think a lot of people are familiar with this way, but I don't like looking at a table and finding things for two reasons. Number one, sometimes I gotta scroll up and down and try and find it, and it could be you could miss it easy. Number two, what if my answer, what if they intersected at where x was 2.5? I don't see 2.5 in my x column here because it only goes by whole numbers. And how am I going to guess what increment my x needs to be in because I don't know what the answer is? That would be very difficult. So those are the two reasons I'd rather use the second method. If I go to my graph, we've had the calculator calculate the min and the max for us. We had it calculate the zeros. And at some point with a circle and a line, we had it graph the intersection. I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to calculate the intersection to my points here and here. All right. So I'm going to hit second, trace, because that's my calc menu. And I want to calculate, you see number five is the intersect. So I hit enter, and you see my little bug dude here. He's moving down there. He's now around the vertex. All you need to do is put him as close to the intersection point as possible. It doesn't need to be right on it. But you have two intersection points. So you want the calculator to calculate one of them, and it will calculate whichever one you are closer to. Meaning, if I want to calculate this intersection point right here, I would have to move the bug closer to this point than this point. For my sake, I'm going to calculate this one first. We should come up with 0, 1. So I'm going to make sure my bug is closer to that, which he is. And I'm just going to hit enter three times. 1, 2, 3. Oh, look at us. Got to love the calculator. I'm going to put that right here. And then I'm going to do it the second time. And I've got to do the same process all over. Second, calculate. I want to go to 5, which is the intersection. And now my little bug dude has got to be closer. Bam. 1, 2, 3. That is 4, 9. Now, you grab that. Bring it here. Good. 4, 9 is pretty easy. 4, 9. There we go. This one, for some reason, throws everybody off. I'm going to bring that to the front. So when I'm, All right. We have one for y, but look for x. That is scientific notation, and sometimes a calculator does funky things. That's negative 7.9 times 10 to the negative 17. So I would have to move my decimal 17 places to the left. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. My God. And I would have to fill all those with zeros. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Of course, it's negative. So it's negative point zero 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 seven nine. That is so tremendously close to zero, it's sickening. I don't know why the calculator does that sometimes. Well, I mean, I do, but it's not worth going into. It calculates things slightly different at times. But that is essentially the point zero, 1. This sometimes throws people off. But you've got to realize, if I have a decimal with all these zeros in front of it, that is essentially, like, let's say I rounded that to the thousands. Isn't that three places? Point zero, zero, zero. That's still zero. So you're pooped on if you do. You're pooped on if you don't. That's why it's nice to know how to do these things algebraically. Let's go on to the next one. Okay. Example two. Solve the following system algebraically. They give us x, negative x squared plus 2x plus 10. y minus x equals 4. All right. I'm going to do this by substitution. Okay. The first thing that needs to happen is I'm going to add x to both sides. So I've got y equals 4 plus 
x. All right? And now I have two equations that are in the form of y equals. I have this, and I have this. Okay? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to set them equal to each other. In, in other words, if y equals 4 plus x, I'm going to substitute 4 plus x in for my y. So I have 4 plus x equals negative x squared plus 2x plus 10. That says quadratic written all over it. I'm going to get everything to one side and solve for x. Okay, so let's... Uh, I'm going to bring everything from the right side over to the left because I like to have a positive x squared. That is so much easier when it comes to factoring. Minus 2x, minus 10. So bang, 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 I'm now equal to 0. I have x squared. Okay. For next, I write my x's. Okay. 1x minus 2x is negative 1x. And then 4 minus 10 is negative 6. That is a very easy factor and solve. A booty, cheek, and t-bone. Multiply to negative 6. Add to negative 1. What? Two numbers. Multiply to negative 6 and add to negative 1. Negative 3 and positive 2. Mm -hmm. There you go. So now I just got to solve those. I mean, and at this point, it becomes easy. So x would equal a positive 3, and x would equal a negative 2, okay? And some people might say, how did you get that? Well, i got to set each one of these parentheses equal to 0. x minus 3 equals 0. Don't I add 3 to both sides? x would equal a positive 3, all right? Same thing here. I could say, well, x plus 2 should be 0, negative 2 and 2 would be 0. So that's kind of how I come up with that so quickly. I am not done, because just like our first problem, which is now a mess on this slide, my solution was coordinates. It wasn't just an x value. All I have, I have an x value of 3, and I have an x value of negative 2. So I have 3 comma something, and I have negative 2 comma something. I only have the x values for the two points of intersection. All right? I need to find the y values. How do I do that? That's where this comes back into play. All right? y equals 4 plus x. All right? So if y equals 4 plus x, 4 plus my x, which is 3, that's 7. So when x is 3, y is 7. And I'm going to do the same thing for my next one. Okay? y equals 4 plus negative 2. If I combine those, I get a positive 2. So when x is negative 2, my y is positive 2. And there, my friends, are my two answers. All right, so let's try another one. This isn't a quadratic and a linear. Rather, this is two quadratics. Okay, this is a problem with two quadratics. There are two quadratics here. So, solve the following system algebraically. Oh, man, if we could only use a calculator and graph them and use the intersect function or... Look at the table if they're nice whole numbers. That would be perfect, uh, but we cannot. So, you're going to have to solve this algebraically. I have both of my equations are set to y equals. The y is alone. So, I'm going to set them equal to each other, meaning I'm going to substitute this expression in for y right here because it equals y. So, I'm going to say negative x squared minus 2x minus 1 equals x squared minus 2x minus 1. Okay? I set them equal to each other. All right? Now, I'm going to bring everything from the left side of the equal sign over to everything to the right. 
because I want to make this x squared positive. Okay, so I'm going to add x squared. Add 2x, add 2x, add 1. <laughs> Boom! Gone, gone, gone. 0 equals, I now have 2x squared. Oh my. Oh my. Cross, cross. They are gone too. Um, so I'm left with 2x squared equal to 0. But it's not too bad. Let's solve for x like we would if we were solving for any one particular variable. Let's do the opposite math, okay? I'm going to start out by getting rid of my coefficient of 2. 0 divided by 2 is still 0. Now, the opposite of squaring something is a square root. x equals 0. Now, someone can say, Visca, anytime you take the square root of something, isn't that plus and minus? It is. But positive 0 and negative 0 are still one value. They're both just zero. Okay? So we really are going to end up with one solution when we're all said and done with this. Okay? So, how can I figure out, because let's not forget, the answers to a system of equation, system of equations, they're coordinates. I need an x and a y, right? I need an x and a y for my answers. Okay? But these two had two sets of coordinates. This one only has one. That's fine. Let's just figure out what our y value is when x is 0. I can use either equation. Okay? I can use this equation. Or I can use this equation. Let's use the top one I highlighted in yellow. Because, I don't know, the x squared is positive. You could use the bottom equation. And you should still get the same answer I get. It doesn't matter if I pick the top equation or the bottom equation. When I put 0 in for x, you should get the same y value. Okay? I'm going to use the top one. I have x squared, and my x is 0, right? So it's x squared, where x is 0, minus 2 times x, which is 0, minus 1. Okay. 0 minus 0 minus 1. That's negative 1. So when x is 0, y is negative 1. How come, mister, we only got one answer? Because if I graph this system on a set of axes, if I graph these two parabolas on a set of axes, here's the point 0, negative 1 right here. Notice that this is a positive parabola. This will open upward. This is a negative parabola. This will open downward. They will touch once at 0, negative 1. There you go. Brilliant dude right here. I'm not that brilliant. Actually, I am. But doing this math isn't that complicated. If you had a calculator like I do, you could graph them both and you would see the same thing. Number four, how many unique solutions are there to the following system of equations? Notice, this is not asking me what the solutions are. They're asking me how many solutions do I have. Notice, they're not telling me to prove this algebraically. They're just asking me how many unique solutions I have. So I can do this on the calculator if I so wish. All right? So that's how I'm going to do it. In order to graph things in the calculator, I need them y equals. And this is already y equals. The problem is this one is not. So I've got to get that in y equals form. I've got to isolate my y. The first thing I'm going to do is subtract my x. So I've got 3y equals 12 minus x. Now I divide by 3. 
y equals 4 minus x over 3. Or if you wanted to, this is correct. Or you could write that as y equals 4 minus 1 third x. Those are both the same thing. Okay? But mister, what if I wrote one, negative 1 third x first, then I wrote my positive 4? I would say congratulations, you came up with the same thing I did. Because that's also the same. Okay? Some people like to see that x first. And that's fine. Okay? That's fine. So this is technically the same as these. You could have one or the other or the other. Oh, now that we're done with that, let's put these in our calculator. And the first thing I'm going to do is clear out my calculator. Okay? I'm going to hit second plus seven, one, two. There we go. Okay? And I'm going to go to y equals. And I'm going to first, y equals, put in my parabola, which is negative x squared minus x plus 2. And I am going to put any one of these three forms of that linear equation or the graph, that, that equation of the line. And I will pick the first one we did. I'm going to go with this first one we did right here. Okay? So I'm going to write y equals 4 minus alpha y equals enter. That's how you put a fraction in there. Alpha y equals enter. That's x over 3. And if I graph this bad boy, there's my parabola. And there's my line. Okay. Okay, I have an issue here. I have an issue here. I don't see my line, which I will do in blue, and my parabola, which I will do in yellow. They don't cross at all. Well, the solution is where they intersect. So if they do not intersect, they do not have any solutions. So there are no solutions to this system of equations. Now, if they wanted you to justify your answer, you could just sketch this graph right here. I mean, quite literally, if I did this, it doesn't have to be exact, but you see, you see how this kind of goes above you know, the x-axis and a little bit left of the origin. I mean, I would just try and draw it kind of somewhat right. And this one just goes above it, right? That one just kind of goes above it. So I just go, da, 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 da. I would just sketch a graph like that and say there are no solutions. If they wanted proof, okay? I would sketch that and say, hey, look at that. There's your parabola. It's open and down because I'm smart. There's my line. They don't touch. They don't touch a day no solution. Now, there are three possible situations to find your solutions. Number one is like this one. You have none. Okay? Maybe they cross or they touch once where you only have one solution. Okay? I also could have a parabola like this, and I could have a line come through and still touch it once. I can have a line and a parabola touch once. Or, just like our first problem, sometimes they touch twice, where the line actually cuts right through the parabola. So we can have two solutions. We can have one solution. And sometimes we can have no solutions. And that's fine, because we know what the answers are. Quadratic inequalities. Ah. What is the difference between a quadratic equation and a quadratic inequality? Well, first off, I hope you know an equation has an equal sign. A quadratic inequality either has a less than or equal to sign, or it can have less than or equal to, greater than or equal to. But depending on what sign you have here, what inequality sign is really going to you know, kind of dictate the graph you draw as well. Meaning, if I have either one of these two, where the straight line is underneath, okay, 
it can be less than or equal to or greater than or equal to. If you have these straight lines underneath, then your graph is a straight line. If I do not have the straight lines underneath, your graph would be a dotted line, meaning when you graph it, you would graph it like a, well, I said dotted, but it's really dashed. These ones, you'd graph a straight line. So a straight line here, if you see the straight lines here. To me, that's the easiest way to remember it. The second thing you need to remember about inequalities, if I'm going to put these on a number line, okay, and I'll do this in red, on a number line, these holes in the numbers would be filled in. That are filled in for these two. For these two on the number line, they are empty. They're empty holes. Okay? So those are two little things I would jot down quickly. Um, that's going to help you when it comes time to graph these things. So, all right, let's graph the inequality in example one here. All right, so I can go on my calculator, and for Y1, I can just put this in and get a table of points, okay? Or, because I know my up and down, left and right movements from what we did earlier in this unit, I know this is a graph of X squared. This is just telling me it's moving down three. So that's how I'm going to graph this. If you want to put this in your calculator, that's fine. You should get the same points. So instead of being at the origin... My vertex is going to be down three. Then I go here. Okay. Then when it's two, it's four, it should be here. Okay. And if you aren't sure uh, where these points should be, let's say when x is three. Well, all I got to do is really throw a three into x. Three squared is nine. Minus three would be six. So I go three, one, two, three, four, five, six. And then this is the reflection over here. So I have this parabola. It looks like this, okay? How come I'm drawing a straight line instead of a dashed line? I'm drawing a straight line to represent my graph because the straight line is underneath my inequality. It's greater than or equal to. It is not just greater than. If the straight line is here, then your graph needs to be a straight line, not a dotted line. Okay, to me that makes a lot of sense. That's the first thing I would tell you. The second thing is, when it comes to inequalities, we need to shade an area. I am either going to shade, okay, this is not the answer yet. I'm just going to tell you. I'm either going to shade inside my parabola, uh -huh, or I'm going to shade everything outside my parabola. Okay, I am not going to do both. It's either going to be the yellow highlight or the blue highlight. But how do I know which one I shade? Some people have many different methods. This is my method. I pick a point that is not on my parabola. Like, I can't pick this point here because that's actually a point in the parabola. What I always do is I pick something that's not on the parabola. And if the origin is available, that's not on the parabola, I pick the origin. How come I pick the origin? Because that's the coordinate 0, 0. My x is 0, and my y is 0. So what I do is this. I plug these two values in for my x and y. My y is 0, and my x is 0. And I simplify that. Of course, 0 squared is still 0. So 0 is greater than or equal to 0 minus 3 is negative 3. Is that true? Yes, that works. So do I shade my origin? Yeah, I'll be okay. Do I shade my origin area? Because that's where my point was, right? It's the same response. Yes. Okay, so since this point worked, this point should be in the shaded area because my shaded area represents all the points that work. So you guys have pens and pencils, not highlighters. What you can do is just simply 
any coordinate in that shaded area would work on this inequality. And I think we've already answered this last, I guess, request. State a point in the solution set. Well, I mean, zero, zero worked in there. So I can do that. So let's do this. Uh, let's pick another point. We know zero, zero works. What about one, two? That's a point one, two. Is that in the solution set? It sure is. What about negative two? One, two, three, four. Negative two, four. Is that in the solution set? It sure is. You could have put any point as long as it is in the red shaded area. Whoo! It's math when it works. I, I don't know anybody who doesn't enjoy being smart. I don't know. Maybe my ex-wife. I'm kidding. I don't have an ex-wife. Well, not yet, anyways. But I'm still married. I do not have an ex, so I'm not insulting anybody. That's a joke. Example two. Find the solution set for the quadratic inequality x squared plus 2x minus 3 is less than 0. Okay. And then it says, note the difference between example 2 and example 1. Right now, example 1 has an equal sign here. Example 2 does not. All right? So let's look at 1, and let's solve this algebraically. Well, we've been doing this for a while now. Two numbers that multiply to negative 3 that add to positive 2. x plus 3, x minus 1 equals 0. Booty cheek, T-bone, x would equal negative 3, and x would equal positive 1. Those are my two solutions to my quadratic equation. Notice example 2 is the same thing. What I am going to do, okay, is first note that the only difference is we now have an inequality sign. I am going to begin to solve this just as if this were an equal sign. All right? Um, because we are going to have to solve this inequality, but we're going to have to show that in a number line. Okay? We're going to have to show this in a number line, and then they want us to write the solution to the inequality. Okay? But I can't start on a number line unless I have a couple numbers to point out. And that's where these come into play. Okay. I'm going to solve this. We just did this in step one. Okay, it's x minus 3. It's x, uh, excuse me, plus 3 minus 1. Ha ha. And my answers were x equals negative 3 and x equals 1. I'm going to take those numbers and I'm going to plot them on a number line. Negative 3, here's positive 1. Okay, I've got to put two points on those lines. I'm going to put a point here, a circle, and a circle here. Are those filled in, or are they empty? They should be empty because of this sign right here. Either one of these signs would be an empty hole. These signs would be filled in. Okay, we have this one, so we're going to use the empty holes. Now, just like we shaded in an area on that graph, there are several solutions. Okay, so I need to figure out where on this number line are my solutions going to be. And again, I'm going to pick a number that's not one of those two points. It is always easiest, if it's available, to pick zero. Now, either zero is going to work, and then everything between here would be the solution. Or, if zero does not work, that means everything outside of zero should be the solution. Okay? Zero is either going to be in the solution set, so I should include it in that area, or it's not going to be in the solution set. Okay? So let's check out zero. I'm literally going to plug zero in here and just check it out. That's what you always do with inequalities. You check your answers. Now, some people have different ways. This is the way I do it, okay? It's x squared, which is 0, plus 2 times x, which is 0, minus 3. And that should be less than 0. I am just taking this inequality here and throwing a 0 in for my x's. 0 plus 0 minus 3 is less than 0. Is negative 3 less than 0? 
Yes. So is zero in my solution? Yes. So my solution has to be these numbers right here because zero is in the solution. And that's how I graph that. Uh, that's how I represent that on a number line. How would I write this? Well, I could say my x values are in between negative 3 and 1. It is everything in between. And just like this did not have an equal sign underneath it, I do not write my equal signs underneath it because my original problem did not have the equal sign underneath it. Okay? I could also write that using notation. Hmm, a different notation. Uh, I could say 3 to 1, but it does not include 3 or 1. If it did include 3 or 1, remember, I would use the square brackets for negative 3 and 1. That's if I had a straight line here, then I would have straight lines here. But since I don't have the straight lines, then I shouldn't draw straight lines. Okay? So this would not be the right answer. This would be if I was writing that with my bracket notation. All right. So they have this additional question down here. Explain why the zeros you found in step one are not in the solution. Well, they're not in the solution because our inequality sign is less than. Less than or equal to would include my zeros, meaning it would include negative 3 and 1. But there's no equal sign, okay? This is missing here, so it does not include them, okay? Explain why? Because uh, there's no uh, or equal to. So I guess if they wanted to explain, it's there's no or equal, meaning it's like this. If it were, then it would include them. I'm drawing a lot of arrows. Crazy. Crazy. We might be able to get through this. So number three says, okay, solve each of the following quadratic inequalities. Write your final answers in interval notation, which is what the brackets are, what I did in red on the last screen, and represent the solution set on a number line. You know what? We have four of these problems to do. This would be a good spot to stop, and we'll pick this up because we are running out of time. Dang it, I was hoping to get through it all, and we can't. But that's fine. I will see you for part two in this one. If you want to go ahead and do these now, and then you can look up part two later, you absolutely can. I'll see you then.